Okay, today we are going to make uh, a theoretic lesson, so we are going to stay here for two hours and not for three. Okay, three is only when we go in the practice in the lab. Okay, let us talk about uh, differential kinematics and uh, in particular, let's start talking about inversion of differential kinematics. We have seen that uh, the kinematic inversion, so at, at the configuration level, is uh, a nonlinear problem which solutions only for very simple structures. Now, by computing the differential kinematics, we have seen that there is uh, a linear mapping between uh, the joint velocities and the end effector linear and angular velocities. We can say that this is a, a locally linear mapping. What does it mean? Well, the Jacobian is configuration dependent. In particular, it is a nonlinear configuration dependent. But now we focus our attention on the functional dependency between Q dot and VE. This is clearly a linear mapping as it is expressed by a matrix. So instantaneously is a millennial matrix. Now, we want to invert. What does it mean? Let us assume that uh, we are working with a planar two link robot. And we are interested only in the linear velocity of the end effector. I want to impose to my robot to follow this end effector linear velocity. So horizontal to the x axis. Okay? Now, the problem is that uh, My motors are here at the joint level, and I'm able to follow a reference for Q. So I can impose to my motors Q desired at each simple time, but I want to follow exactly a certain assign and effector velocity. In this case, we'll talk about velocity. So mathematically, I do want to invert this. I want to make the inversion of this. Actually, I'm able to do it instantaneously because we already have seen that this is a, a close relative to linear algebra y is equal a multiplied x. And we made some refresh last week. We do know how to make the inversion of this one. But now this is a differential relationship. So there is the time in, uh, into the game. What we do want to do is, OK, I know the configuration of this one at t equal 0. I do know its initial velocity. Okay. I assign the end effector velocity, and I do want to compute Q as function of the time. Okay? So I know where do I start from? I start from a certain configuration, and for example, I start uh, with a robot still. So this is zero, it's not moving. I know where I do want to go with the end effector. I want to follow a certain specific path with the end effector. And uh, I do want to compute the joint configuration as function of time. Then if I'm able to do that, 
I can send this to the low level controller, to the controller of uh, the joints, and then they will follow this, and following Q function of time, they will follow the assign and effect of the loss. This is the problem of differential kinematics inversion. Okay, if it is square, square means that the number of the joints is equal to R. R is uh, the number of task variables. Here, N equal to and R equal to in the sense that I'm only interested in uh, X and Y position of the end effect. In this sense, this is a square problem. I cannot control also the orientation of the end effector because I have two motors and three degrees of freedom. So I just disregard the orientation. I only want to control the position. Okay? With three link, I can control X, Y, and Z, for example, or with three link, a spatial uh, structure, with six position and orientation. And we will work, uh, um, we will talk about orientation later on. As usual, first the position for the main concept and then. The orientation that always has some uh, tricky concepts. Okay, so this is very easy. It's just a metric inversion. Let us assume that uh, J has full rank. Do you remember when it loses rank, we are facing a, sing a kinematic singularity? Okay, let us assume that J is full rank. The inverse exists. I can compute this very easily, and I Q dot. Now, this is time continuous. I can discretize and from this. I can easily compute I can easily compute the algorithm that I'm going to implement in my code. Okay. I do know the end effect of velocity as function of time, I can compute at each sampling time the current Jacobian, make the inverse. I know the sampling time of my hardware. Typical numbers are 1, 10 milliseconds. Okay, those are typical numbers for industrial robots. And then, <coughs> by knowing the current configuration, I can compute the next one. This will be sent to the low level controller. And then, doing that at each sampling time, allows me to follow a desired and effective velocity. Okay? This is very basic concept of what is defined as kinematic control. This is too simple. We, we have a lot of problems. I mean, this is very, I mean, uh, <coughs> simplified at maximum. Uh, and now we will make it a little bit more complex uh, uh, today and next lessons. For example, well, first of all, Yes, very nice solution, but this is valid only for square robots. And uh, my robots, le le let me consider my robot always not square because it's a, it's, it's a specific situation when it is square. Okay?
case, you have uh, seven joints. This is planar. So your control objective can only be position of the end effector, x and y, because z is out, and uh, eventually the orientation as angle with respect to x. Okay? You have seven joints. If you build the geometric Jacobian, your geometric Jacobian will be something like uh, here we can write uh, uh, phi dot because in this case it's, it's equal, equal. Here we have uh, a J uh, geometric multiplied phi dot with J with three lines and seven columns. Each of these one is the contribution to the end effect of motion given by each individual joint. Okay? And in particular, we build the geometric Jacobian, so we know how to compute each of the col columns of this guy. Okay? But this, is full, this could be full rank, but not square. Um, yes, if the rank is three, it is full rank. So it means that we are using the assumption now that the rank of the Jacobian is at least R. The degrees of freedom we want to control. Okay? Okay, so the fact that I'm writing J minus one means that here I'm assuming the same number of, of rows and columns. And this is a, a specific case. I want to disregard this assumption. It's not the only one. There is another problem, a problem that will be clear a little bit later. Uh, this is somehow an open loop control. What does it mean, an open loop control? Well, if I do want to go from uh, from A to B, okay? And here I assign a certain uh, velocity profile in order to go from A to B in three seconds, so to say. So I compute my uh, time law, and we will do it uh, after the uh, differential kinematics, the way how to compute the, the desired trajectory. I have my robot. I use, I implement this one. Well, it, what I discover is that I will not go in B. I will go in a certain B prime different from B. Why? Well, because here there are some uh, integration errors, okay, some round off errors. There is not anywhere the information on where is actually my end effect. I suppose that uh, VE is uh, perfectly computed because it's analytically computed, okay. Then I have here a delta T, a discretization error. And this discretization error means that this will never be equal to the analogic continuous time QT. Problem that is not a robotic problem. This is a problem of discretization of differential equations with difference equations. Even if uh, this is a nonlinear one, because here we have Q, okay, because this is configuration dependent, this is a, a mathematical problem, well known. So from the control perspective, we can claim uh, that the problem is. Uh, the fact that this implementation is open loop, okay? And we will solve it. So we will be able to recover this error and implement an algorithm in a way that B prime will be equal B in the end of this moment, okay? Uh, here, I'm talking simply about this difference equation. I'm not even talking about 
the error of the low level controller. Okay? Even assuming that your low level controller is perfect, you do have uh, this problem of integration error. Okay, we need first to think a little bit about redundancy. And uh, before going into the differential kinematics inversion, we need to see a little bit the interpretation of the redundancy. try to, to understand uh, this draw the students of uh, uh, magistral informatica they should have seen something similar in theory of the system ok I have uh, the space of all possible joint velocities this is an uh, n dimensional space there is it n. Well, if I mm. compute JQ dot for for all this. velocity I come up with uh, a space of all the possible and effector velocity ok you can call image of the matrix so an uppercase I or as it, as it is done here Questa è una lezione, quindi dobbiamo ora faccio la vostra, ok? L'esempio. Va bene, ok, ciao. <coughs> Sorry. So this is I for image of the matrix, and here there is another symbol, is R, but it's the same, the concept is the same. However, I do have that certain joint velocities <coughs> they do not cause any end effect or movement. This is the robotics interpretation. From the matem from the, the linear algebra aspect, I do have certain velocity for which q dot is different from zero, but j q dot is equal to zero. And they belong to what is called the, sorry the null space and uh, the general is I don't know but null space or kernel I don't know other, other words to, to well in general your uh, velocity can be also you know larger than the image of J let us see a simple example where this is the case. Planar to link. If I consider the ve linear velocity, well, I do have uh, always the, no, the velocities going out from the blackboard that is here. But let me say that this is uh, a wrong uh, problem formulation. Because, of course, I know that I cannot have this kind of velocity. Okay, so here I shouldn't have problem. So this is the image of the Jacobian. Here I have uh, the null space of the Jacobian. It means that uh, all the possible joint velocities, either they do cause a movement of the end effect, or they do not move the end effect. 
but they do not move the end effector, but they do move the joints, of course, because Q dot is different from zero. How it is possible? We will, we will see a simple uh, video in the next slide, but the example is the one that uh, I've already done. Let us imagine that this is fixed, okay? A movement uh, that does not move the end effector is this one. I'm not moving the end effector, okay? So I have uh, here, I have some internal motion of my arm because we do have seven degrees of freedom. Okay, mathematically, if the dimension of uh, the image of J is R, the dimension of the null space is the complement to N. N is the number of columns, is the number of the de of the degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is uh, the situation in in general. Yes. on the same end effector. So it is, of course, a, it is a redundant robot. You are seeing the same end effector effect, let me say, but internally you have two different movements. The simplest way to imagine is this is zero, and so you have only this one, and you project on zero. And so for this reason you call it internal movement. But you do have internal movement uh, also when the end effector is moving. In general, you want to—I mean—you want to control all, also the internal movement. So the general solution is what we already have seen uh, in the refresh of the linear algebra uh, systems of linear equations uh, solution. The general solution is given by a certain Q dot star, a certain solution, for example, at the pseudo inverse, plus any arbitrary, arbitrary vector that belongs to the null space. Well, we can easily verify that this is the solution because we have Q dot Q dot star plus, and I say, okay, this guy here belongs to the null space. Let me project this equation on the end effector velocity. What does it mean, project? I have to left multiply by the Jacobian. This is the meaning of project, okay? I left multiply by uh, the uh, Jacobian. And then, but this is equal to zero by construction, because if this font belongs here, the projection means, you know, geometrical means that I'm projecting this guy to zero. So I'm not affecting the solution. Q dot A is an arbitrary, A stay, stays here for arbitrary, is an arbitrary movement, in a, sorry, is an arbitrary internal movement, is not affecting the end effect. Let us see a commercial that shows very clearly the internal movement of a seven degrees of freedom robot, okay? Here, you see the robot that whose end effector is totally still. Position orientation is not moving. However, internally, 
is showing all the Q dot A, all the internal movement. It means that you can reconfigure the robot, uh, even if you need to make a certain task, you can reconfigure the robot. Reconfigure in order to, for example, exhibit better dynamic or static properties. We will see later in the, in the course what does it mean, okay? Now, the concept of compliance, uh, you still don't have it, and uh, this will be only for, for the magistral informatica. The others will not arrive until compliance. You see, this guy is interacting with the robot. Interacting means that the is changing forces, okay? And the control is taking care of what it's doing. Now, I mean, it's a little bit obscure because we haven't done it up to now. <coughs> we still are at the kinematics level. Okay, so we saw the internal movement. How can I handle the redundancy? Well, I'm going to rewrite the same equations that we saw for the system linear equations, but with a, a robotics perspective. Now. So the interpretation will change, but the equations will be exactly the same. For a given configuration, I want to find Q dot that satisfies this one, okay? And uh, I do know that here I have uh, more... Pronto? Sorry again. I have uh, more joints then the degrees of freedom that I want to control in the end effect, okay? It means that I do know that I have more unknowns than equations, and I do know that I have infinite solutions. I can formulate an optimization problem. Among the infinite Q dot that satisfy, let us consider the Q dot that satisfies, that minimize this functional. Uh, do you see what I'm going to minimize? The Not the movement. Uh, this is the minimization that is done at each instant, continuous time. So it's not the movement. No. Sorry? No. Uh, yes, the norm of the angular velocity. Remember Q dot transpose Q dot. Can uh, implement, for example, the Lagrange multipliers method. Uh, we are not going to, to do it again, let me say. If you have done it in uh, calculus, it's okay. Otherwise, trust me that the solution is this one. This is something we already have seen, is the right cell inverse. Okay? We are making the assumption that the J is full rank. We will see later on what happens if the J is not full rank. We are making this assumption. So we use this uh, technique, Lagrange multipliers, and we have the solution. Okay, we are very happy with that, and it works, yes, of course. Q dot, among all the possible velocity in this specific configuration, is the minimum norm one. 
okay? Okay. However, I sometimes don't want to consider all the robots with the same way because what I usually have is something like that. Uh, okay, I don't. It's something like that. So graphically, I reproduce, reproduce three joints larger than the other three. So the links are easier. This is a co common design. Our arm has the base that is easier than the width. Okay? This is a common design. The base is always bigger than the last part. And as I told you, usually you have a separation in the movement in the sense that uh, the first joints move around the wrist and the wrist has the task, let me say, to change the orientation. So, from the energetical point of view, it's not very important that you minimize the norm of Q dot because you can make some differences. You know? Uh, among the various joints. And the difference can be made simply by changing the function and using another function, that is the weighted one. Where W is a positive definite function. A positive definite function means typically no, not typically. Is the extension to the generalization to matrices of uh, uh, number uh, larger than zero. Let us consider the simplest case. This is a diagonal one. Okay. Let us consider a two degrees of freedom case. We are telling that we want to minimize q dot 1, q dot 2, and here I have, for example, one zero zero ten. it is positive definite, yes, easily, can be, can be seen with the uh, necessary and sufficient condition that we saw, but this can be written easily as Here, I'm introducing a weight. This is 10, this is 1. So the algorithm is going to minimize this function that is different from this one. Okay? Uh, for the guys that followed the Redis semi, we saw the Malau Mobis uh, distance. This is the same. Now W is up to the designer. It's not the covariance. It's up to you. You can have it constant, or you can have it uh, changing with the, with the configuration or with some other reasoning. The point is that uh, we can introduce easily this one in the minimization, and the optimal solution is easy to compute as well. Uh, you don't have to compute the inverse of W because it is constant, okay? And if it is diagonal, it is the, each element is just the inverse of the corresponding element. So you can embed it in the code uh, and you don't have to make it this computation real. And here you have a, some other matrix multiplications. It's not a problem. As I told you several times, the, the, the computational capability of the hardware uh, allows us to implement easily uh, a large family of, uh, of algorithms that were maybe AB to implement uh, some 10, 15 years uh, ago. Okay, you may want to use a different symbol if you want for, for this guy. Okay. If I just take my calculus book 
And they say, are there other ways to make the inversion of a system of linear equations with more unknowns than equations? And I say, yes, there is another one. This other method does not minimize the norm of Q dot, but rather this function. Can you, can you give me the interpretation? Sorry? No, no, the interpretation of the function. I'm trying to minimize what here? Sorry? I don't understand. No, the velocity is, was the, the previous one. Here, I minimize the norm of the joint velocities. Let's let, let call them uh, joint velocities, not angular, because this can be also a linear joint, okay? So here I want to minimize the joint velocities. Uh, okay, here I want to min here I want to minimize the weighted joint velocities. But now this is, this is different. Ideally, I want to bring this to zero. The error. The error? No, the the word error uh, is not correct here. Uh, Okay, Q dot, let me say, the, the degrees of freedom here is Q dot. And Q dot he, A is assigned, so arbitrary velocity. If I bring this to zero, it means that I'm uh, assigning a certain Q dot. The um, no, the point is I cannot assign arbitrary the velocity because I have a you know, a certain reference for the end effector. What I can do is, I know that there are infinite joint velocities that satisfy the problem, so that gives me the end effector that I want. They are infinite joint velocities. Among all the infinite possibilities, if I minimize this, I'm going to select the closest to Q dot A, okay? So I'm minimizing this vector, q dot minus q dot a, at each instant. It means that I'm trying to go as close as possible to q dot a, but at the same time, I'm providing the end effector velocity imposed by the problem, okay? Uh, Lagrangians as earlier, and then the solution is this one. Well, it means that uh, the solution exhibits the structure that we already have seen for the, the uh, in, in the last lesson. Here I have a, a seed inverse as if there is no Q dot A, okay? Plus Q dot A, but Q dot A is left multiplied by a strange matrix. This is exactly the null space projector, okay? So this is very, very, the, 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 I mean, the interpretation is very powerful. I have Q dot A. And I don't know if Q, if Q dot A is solving my task. I know that uh, this one, Q dot star, is solving it. Solving it means that I do know that if I project this one, I exactly have uh, the end effector velocity that I wish. Okay? So the solution first multiply this one in order to put it in a new space, and then this is projected in zero. Okay? all the null space is projected in zero. Mm -hmm. So I can sum those two without problem because this is... What I do have uh, in the joint space is a component that gives me the solution mm -hmm. and another that gives me the internal motion. Okay, I can assign the internal motion arbitrarily. No. There are, uh, there are uh, some, some uh, con uh, 
considerations that we are going to do. The uh, uh, particular one. Yes. 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 We are nothing but giving an interpretation to calculus results. Okay? And it is simply a different interpretation. Then there is uh, one additional uh, problem. We are here reasoning instantaneously. So in this moment, I have those velocities. Okay? But uh, we need to consider all the movement. But if I use the term <coughs> movement, it means that I need to integrate the velocity and see what is the path followed by the robot. This is something that we are going to do uh, today and uh, Wednesday and Friday. Okay? Or today and Wednesday. Okay. I do a select the internal motion. That was your question. Uh, do you know, do you recognize here a uh, algorithm to look for the minimum of, on a, of a nonlinear function? What kind of uh, this one? What kind of algorithm is this one? This is the gradient descent. Let us consider W as function of the configuration, okay? partial derivative of W with respect to Q is the gradient. If I multiply the gradient by a scalar, I'm shaping the velocity Q dot A that I want to follow to go toward the minimum of W. Calculus, and we are not going to repeat it. I just want to, to know why why we do have this transpose here. The partial derivative of omega with respect to Q, what dimension is it? to have it all columns. So Q dot A is equal. Well, this is partial derivative. I need to make the transpose. That's all. And this is a gain uh, that affects the velocity of convergence, eventual convergence of my, of my algorithm. It's a gain and uh, we made uh, feedback control theory. We know how dangerous uh, can be the gains in a, in, a, in a control loop. Selection of this gain needs to be made, I mean, with attention, because I cannot implement this one on my computer. This is continuous time. I need to discretize. And so we'll have a gain and a discretization. And we know that every time that we discretize, we can uh, face some issues, especially if we have high gain control loops. Okay? So let's just remember that this k 
needs to be selected uh, with caution. And uh, let us consider three possible functions to be minimized. So Q dot A will not be arbitrary. Q dot A is arbitrary in the sense that I can select it, but my purpose is to optimize something. Whenever I have uh, redundancy, it means that uh, I can select the degrees of freedom, and the best idea is to select them in order to accomplish some other task, for example, optimization. This is one, uh, the first one. Let us try to think a little bit what I would like to maximize in this case. So let's think, this is a square root of a determinant. Determinant of J, J transpose. So omega is uh, larger than zero by construction. Is, uh, is actually, is a scalar, so I can say it's larger than zero. Positive number. When does it is zero? Can you? And when does the determinant is zero? When the matrix is singular, and the matrix is not a, a random matrix. This is the Jacobian. The Jacobian loses rank when I'm, I'm in a, a kinematic singularity. If I maximize this functional, it means that I want to go away from zero. It means that I'm using the internal motion in order to go away from the kinematic singularity, okay? This is the idea of this specific matrix, and uh, the name is manipulability, because in a kinematic singularity, I lose manipulability. So now I want to increase manipulability. This is just a terminology stuff. Okay? I'm, uh, I, need to, I need to consider that uh, I'm apparently very happy with that, but I cannot avoid the kinematic singularities uh, implementing this one. I can push them far away, but this is a local minimization, okay? At each instant, I just keep the direction in order to increase uh, the manipulability. But I cannot guarantee that I'm avoiding the kinematic singularities, okay? Okay, let us see the second one. Another problem with the robots is the moment in where you encounter the mechanical joint limits. What is a mechanical joint limit? It's this one, okay? I cannot go over this angle, I cannot. And if this was a robot, one possibility to avoid breaking the mechanical structure is to put here a switch, an hardware switch, that power off the motor. If by mistake you assign a trajectory and uh, the power switch open or closes, it depends, you just power off everything. So you avoid breaking your robot or you close the, you close the mechanical brakes, some emergency procedures activate, okay? I want to avoid it. And again, in an industrial environment, uh, I pre-plan the trajectory and I make the same trajectory for uh, weeks and months. And I'm sure that the joint will always stay within the same range. But in a sensor-based motion advanced robotics, the user that asks for, uh, to, to grasp something and then to put it there, and my algorithm makes something like that, I cannot avoid it. I can try to exploit redundancy for example, to avoid mechanical joint limits. Here, there are, um, I think, 10 or 12 functions uh, proposed in the literature, should be also more than that. This is just one as an educational example. My joint will uh, 
exhibit a minimum and a maximum value. Okay? So here I have, for example, if this is zero, 45 degrees is the minimum and uh, pi is the maximum. Okay, 180 is the maximum. So I have those two numbers here and here I have the average of the two. I try to, this is, there is a minus here, I try to maximize this one, I'm trying to have zero here. So I'm trying to stay as close as possible to the average of the two. It's one possible solution, it's not the smartest one, but it's just as an educational, I mean, uh, example, okay? Then if I am redundant, I can avoid obstacles. And this is another uh, function that can be maximized. Um, I'll show you something uh, in the next slide about obstacle avoidance. No, uh, next two slides. So here, if I want to minimize, <coughs> given the obstacle, you know, I want to minimize this, then the norm of this one, it means that uh, I'm uh, looking for the velocities that q dot a that uh, stay away from this, this, those are the coordinates of the obstacle, okay? This is very simple, one uh, puntual obstacle with a sphere around it, okay? It's just, again, this is two only for educational purpose. This one is implemented, those other two are for educational purpose. Uh, Something that uh, uh, you are not going to do in this class, but in case you want to make the thesis with us, is interesting because we implemented, we already have it implemented in the robot, is um, we do have a lot of uh, uh, joints. So our redundance is rich, let me say. And we can control several objectives, not only one scalar function to maximize. And we can arrange them uh, in priority. So we can have uh, some priority among the objectives from minor to uh, critical. So let's start with the critical one. All the safety ones are critical. If I hit an obstacle, if I hit myself, if I hit a person, I need to interrupt my mission. So those are critical ones, all the safety-related tasks. Then uh, I need to satisfy the physical constraints, the joint limits, the actuator limits, the workspace limits, uh, or in case a humanoid balance myself, okay? A little bit less than safety, but needs to be satisfied. Then uh, the, the reason why I'm moving a robot, so the execution of the mission, that comes, I mean, below the other one. First, safety, okay? Then, okay, grasp the bottom but first safety. And lower than safety, some optimization. For example, if I'm a humanoid, I usually have several sensor vision. I have two eyes. I can optimize and I can look at my task in order to optimize it. But if for some constraints I cannot move my head, I can still do it. For example, I saw the, I estimated the position five seconds ago, now my knee is blocked for some reason, but I can still do it. So this is an op optimization task that is not critical, so of lowest importance. All the energy efficiency, uh, all the directional sensor and so, they're all uh, lower, minor or lowest importance. So I can control a lot of stuff. I'll show you later on some, uh, some videos. Now, and also to make you feel a little bit the, the, the project for the exam for all but the Italians. So for, for you, you will have additional stuff, but for uh, uh, Maya and mechanical engineer, this could be, uh, I mean, this actually was a project exam a few years ago, okay? So let us see. With VREP, uh, we haven't done yet I mean, any, any VREP lesson, but I just told you what is it. So uh, 
the, the robot is in VREP, if you, if you look at the waste, it is different from the one that we have in the lab. Okay, we change it. Now we have a different one. But is it all the same? Here, <coughs> the task is to bring the glass to the mouth of, a, of the operator. Okay? And here there is an obstacle. The first movement is without exploiting redundancy. We have seven degrees of freedom, but we control only position orientation of the end effect. So there was an obstacle along the, the path. He just ignored it, didn't exploit redundancy. And uh, the end effector, the object touched the obstacle. Okay? Now let us do the same, but uh, exploiting the redundancy. He, he also changed the, the, <laughs> the face of the person. So now we are going to exploit the redundancy. Okay. change the path. And now he's using this reactive uh, function in order to avoid the path. But of course, if you know in advance everything, even if you have six degrees of freedom, you can do a different movement. Yes. Okay, so we will see uh, uh, another couple of examples uh, taken from the uh, previous year's uh, uh, projects. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you consider it easy or not. It will be easier in a couple of weeks to understand uh, what has been done in this, uh, in this project. Okay, let us make uh, five minutes 